Hi everybody. My name is Lauren. I'm a part-time artist and full-time seeker of mysteries. Today I have found one that hits so close to home for me and I had never heard of this but apparently there's something called the Kentucky Goblins. Well, I'm going to tell you about that and I'm going to work on a painting while I do it. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to paint today. Something floral maybe. So we'll see what sparks my interest and I'll tell you about these Kentucky Goblins. So I heard about a documentary and it's called Hellier. Hellier. I am I'm from Knott County, which is two counties away from Pike County, which apparently is where Hellier is. And I had never heard of this place. Um, and I don't think I ever would have heard of this place if not for this documentary. And actually some of the images that they showed, I've been there. But anyway, I've seen this documentary because Tom DeLong from Bleak 182 suggested it. And I thought, well, he's big into aliens. Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Listen, I'm going to tell you all you need to know. And I'm going to save you the torment that is watching Hellier. Because that is the worst. That was the worst seven hours of my life. And it's not the greatest story. But I'm going to tell you because I spent seven hours watching it. In Hellier, Kentucky which is right outside of Pikeville in 2012. A Dr. David, a Dr. David Christie tells the story of these little children sized beings outside of his home. He said that he has children or, and they were telling him, you know, dad, there's these kids playing outside my window. And, he hadn't seen them and he just didn't know what they were talking about. And he was like, well, what do they look like? And she said, well, they're bald like grandpa and they have big eyes and no hair and they're, they're little like kids. So, um, he just kind of, you know, shrugged her off and, she kept telling him that she was seeing these little bald children playing outside. So after saying it so many times, he was like, okay, there's probably something to this. She wouldn't lie right on and on and on. So one night she screams down the hallway and he takes off running to go see what the problem is. Well, he meets her halfway down the hallway and he said, what's wrong? And she says, it's the the bald children and they were outside playing on my wind by my window and they were trying to get in he said she said but um they weren't tall enough to reach so they didn't come in but instead they were pecking on the window so the pecking scared her bad enough that she screamed and went and got her dad and he went and looked and he didn't see anything. He claimed uh, that the things ended up taking his dog. He said he installed uh, motion sensitive cameras and uh, he had had some footprints that supposedly these little creatures had left and it's a really like human-like footprint, but it only has three giant toes. Like the front of it's really big, almost like a clown shoe, but it's in three big humps, like three giant toes. So, Mr. Christie had installed these uh, floodlights, these motion sensor lights. And one day, uh, he seen that they were, they had went off and something was lit up outside. So he knew something was out there. So he went and he took pictures of these little bald children, which were Kentucky goblins, I guess. So apparently this wasn't, 
this wasn't slowing down. Um, he kept seeing these things and they were tormenting them and trying to get into their house. And finally they were like, we'd had enough. We just grabbed our stuff and got out of there. Just left it, you know, left most of it, grabbed what we could, got the heck out of Dodge. So that was the last anybody heard of David Christie. So um, this story also connects to a story out of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, which is way further west. And that story is out of the 50s. So it was a long time ago. And the only difference is that the little creatures in Hopkinsville had giant ears along with being very small and looking like bald children. So they ended up making a documentary about this story. What I've told you is the whole story, but they decided they needed to make a documentary anyway. So they went to uh, the Mammoth Cave place, um, Cave City, which is close to Hopkinsville. It's more Western Kentucky. So they went out there and, you know, I was asking questions about what happened in the 50s. Have anybody seen anything? This little girl says, yeah. I see these little creatures and she draws a picture with three toes and a little goblin with some ears, basically. Just it they say in the documentary that it looks like an alien with ears, but really it just kind of looks like if you were gonna draw like a vampire with some big pointy ears, that's kind of what she drew. But anyway. Um so they finally end up going to Kentucky. <sighs> when I tell you that this is the worst documentary I've ever watched. And I watch a lot. I watch a lot of aliens. And I mean, I can even get into some Atlantis. Like, I watch a lot of stuff. And oh, they lost me. They just lost me. They lost me the minute they drove to Kentucky. They, okay, first of all, they were playing this dark, dingy music in the background, like trying to make it seem scary. And they were all saying, we got these awful feelings as soon as we got there. And it's like, well, I've been there. I, I didn't get any feeling. I've, I've never heard anybody else get a feeling. And I've never heard anybody talk about what you're saying has happened here you know so they get there and apparently hillier is way up just a very small road and the only thing that's up that road is a gas station so they decide to just set up camp at this gas station and that's what they do and you can imagine they're just talking to whoever decides they need gas that day. They don't need anybody with any special, you know, stories to tell. So, of course, they get the cream of the crop that Pike County has to offer. Oh, my goodness. So, there's one man comes up. He's telling them about Bigfoot. And then it's another man telling him, you know, he's seen a UFO. And then. There's another older guy that says, uh, we didn't go to the moon and there was planets closer than the moon. So why would we go there when there's planets that are closer? Okay, so they go to Pikeville and they go to City Hall and they start asking people, you know, um, have you ever heard of David Christie? Nobody ever has. They go to like the city hall and like the records departments of um, who's bought purchased land and such. And nobody know the name of David Christie has ever purchased land in Pike County or anywhere near Hillier. So 
they go back to the gas station and they just start asking random people nobody ever tells them anything instead of going to the hampton inn that exists in pockville they find the most broke down disgusting looking hotel beside the road to stay in just so everything looks you know creepier i guess that's the the vibe they were going for let's see how scary we can make this completely normal town look and uh they start walking like in the grass and the girl decides she's going to do a ritual to show these little being things that she means them no harm and she gives them a tobacco offering and nothing happens nothing happens she tells them um you know that they can speak through her friend here they uh go and so they go rent a cabin in jenkins and if you're not from the area here's pockville here's jenkins hellier's in the middle so they stayed in Pockville the first night. The second night, they rented a cabin over in Jenkins. So, they rent their little cabin, and they're all sitting out on the porch in the dark, you know, for for peak effect of scariness. And they decide that they're going to try to get this little creature to speak to them through their friend with a spirit box yeah speak to them through their friend with a spirit box i i don't really know what the spirit box is but they blindfold their friend and they're all sitting on the porch and he just starts saying random words that definitely are coming from these things and these people are just in a cabin out in the woods just you know in the middle of nowhere we have bears yeah and we have coyotes <laughs> and we have i mean raccoons a raccoon could tear you apart these people are literally sitting in the middle of the wilderness talking to their friend and pretending that he is a entity and saying "Ooh, what's that you know because they hear like a tree branch break in the woods well that's probably a bear and you should go inside okay the next thing about this lovely documentary synchronicity that's the word of the day guys synchronicity you don't know what that is oh you watch this for seven hours you'll know exactly what a synchronicity is it's when something weird happens and you piece together these things that aren't related at all whatsoever and you decide that they're leading you to something amazing yeah well they're not and they hadn't found anything but they say the word synchronicity at least 50 times so much that my fiance started tallying it on his phone to see how many times in one of these episodes oh this is not a one hour documentary no 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 this is a two season documentary yeah anyway i i wondered i really wondered why i had never heard of a kentucky goblin and it's because this is the most ridiculous story i've ever heard in my life and these people were so excited about it and listen if you like if you like the ghost hunter shows you may really enjoy this documentary but it's a ghost hunter show that's not ghosts it's a ghost hunter show about these alien goblin things so they um 
they never find this David Christie guy. Um, they never find the house that uh, he claims to have been living in when he's seen these things. They never get any kind of inkling to where that might be. They have no idea. So, after, okay, this was episode five. So, after four hours of this documentary, they just pick a train tunnel and decide that's where they need to go look. So, these four or five lovely genius people just go up into the darkness in this train tunnel and there's no such thing as bears or coyotes or or anything like that that can harm you. But there's definitely goblins in that train tunnel. Spoiler. There's no goblins in the train tunnel. Now listen. That was the summary of season one. And I turned season two on. And I just couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> if I'm honest, I just could not do it anymore. So, um you're curious that um, if season two ever brought about Kentucky goblins, you may have to watch that one yourself. But, um, and if you like, like the shows like Ghost Hunters and stuff where they hear a little sound that their friend made and decide that that's the ghost from Wendy from the 1920s, then you may really want to watch season two. I just couldn't, I just could not do anymore. <laughs> if you enjoyed it, make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell to make sure that you know when I upload my next mystery and art video. Thank you all. Stay creative and curious. Bye.